In this lesson, we will learn how to add and subtract mixed fractions. First, let's review how to change a mixed fraction to an improper fraction. Here, we have a mixed fraction, 2 and 3 quarters. To change this from a mixed fraction to an improper fraction, first we're going to take the denominator and we're going to multiply that by the whole number and to that we're going to add the numerator. So our denominator is 4 multiplied by our whole number is 2 and to that we will add the numerator which is 3. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. So this gives us the numerator of our improper fraction and the denominator doesn't change. So our denominator is still 4. So this is something that you will want to write down and commit to memory because you will need to use this later. The denominator times the whole number plus the numerator gives us the numerator of our improper fraction. For our first example, we're going to add two mixed fractions. So we have two and three-fifths plus four and a quarter. I'm going to show you two ways that you can add these mixed fractions. So the first way that we'll add these fractions, let's add the whole numbers. So we're going to add the whole numbers and then after that we will add the fractions. So let's start by writing out the question again. So two and three-fifths plus four and one quarter equals, now if we add our two whole numbers first, we get six, two plus four is six, and then we'll just write the fractions after. So three-fifths plus one quarter. On the next line, our whole number does not change, so we still have six. Now in order to add these two fractions, we need a common denominator. So you have to think, what number is common between 5 and 4? Or, what is our lowest common multiple of 5 and 4? Well, our lowest common multiple between 5 and 4 is 20. So let's write the fractions with a denominator 20. We have to ask ourselves, what do we multiply 5 by to get 20? Well, we multiplied 5 by 4. Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So we're going to multiply 3 by 4, 3 times 4 gives us 12. So our numerator here is 12. We'll do the same thing for this fraction. What did we multiply 4 by to get 20? Well, we multiplied 4 by 5. So we have to multiply 1 by 5 as well. And 1 times 5 is 5. So there's our second numerator. On the next line, our whole number does not change. Now we can add our numerators. So 12 plus 5 is 17 over, denominator stays the same, 20. So here we have 6 and 17 over 20, and we know this is our final step because there's no number that goes into both 17 and 20 evenly, so we know that this fraction is in its lowest form. Another way you could add these two mixed numbers is by changing them into improper fractions. So changing to improper fractions. Let's begin by writing the question out again. So 2 and 3 fifths plus 4 and 1 quarter. Now instead of just adding 2 and 4, first we need to change 2 and 3 fifths and 4 and 1 quarter into improper fractions. So as we did before, we're going to multiply 5 times 2, which is 10 plus 3 gives us 13 over 5 plus 4 times 4 is 16 plus 1 is 17 over 4. So there are the fractions as improper fractions. Now we need to convert 
to a common denominator, because we cannot add 13 over 5 plus 17 over 4. And as before, our common denominator, or the lowest common multiple of 5 and 4 is 20. So we'll write our fractions with the denominator 20. And we can think to ourselves, what do we multiply 5 by to get 20? Well, 5 times 4, so 13 times 4, and that gives us 52. Change back to the color, 52. Plus, what do you multiply 4 by to get 20? Well, 4 times 5, so 17 times 5. And 17 times 5 is 85. Now we can add on our next line the numerators. So 52 plus 85 is 137 over 20. Before we finish, let's convert this improper fraction back to a mixed fraction. So to do that, how many times does 20 go into 137? Well, it goes in, there's, we can fit 20 in 6 times, but we still have a remainder of 17, which we write as our numerator, over 20 as the de denominator. And you'll notice that in both cases, we end up with the same answer. So when adding fractions, you can add the whole numbers, or you can change to improper fractions, and in each case, when you add, you'll end up with the same answer. This, however, is not the case when we subtract mixed fractions. In this final example, let's subtract 3 and 3 quarters and 1 and 1 sixth. What you might be tempted to do for this question is subtract the whole numbers first and then subtract the fractions after. If we did that in this example, we would subtract 3 and 1 and get 2 and then we can subtract the whole numbers, or the fractions, after. However, if we do that, and this fraction here is smaller than this fraction, we'd end up having to borrow from the two, and we don't want to get into that. So the easiest way, and the best way that'll give us the right answer every single time when we subtract, is to first change our mixed fractions to improper fractions, and then subtract. So let's do that. So if we're gonna change 3 and 3 quarters to an improper fraction. We're going to multiply 4 times 3, which gives us 12, plus 3 is 15. So we end up with 15 over 4, because our denominator does not change. Subtract, well, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and again over 6 because our denominator doesn't change. So we have our mixed fractions written now as improper fractions. Before we subtract, we need to find a common denominator. So what is the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6? Well, both go to into 12 evenly. So let's write our fractions with a denominator of 12. Now we need to ask ourselves, what do we multiply 4 by to get 12? Well, multiply 4 by 3. So let's multiply 15 by 3. That gives us 45. So our first fraction is 45 over 12. And what do we multiply 6 by to get 12? Well, 6 by 2. So let's go 17, or 7, sorry, times 2. 7 times 2 is 14. And we are subtracting. So 45 subtract 14. That gives us 31. And our denominator stays the same because we only subtract the numerators. So 31 over 12. Before we finish, let's change this improper fraction back to a mixed fraction. So, how many times does 12 go into 31 evenly? Well, it only goes evenly twice. So 2 becomes our whole number, and we have a remainder of 7, because 12 times 2 is 24, and between 24 and 31, we have that remainder of 7. And the denominator does not change, so it's still 12. So we end up having 2 and 7 over 12. That's it for this video, subtracting and adding mixed fractions. As always, you can download the class notes from our class website. Thanks for watching.